Good day and welcome to Medicine Health. I'm Dr. Paul, and today we're doing what can you do to prepare for cold and flu season, uh, natural lifestyle, et cetera, edition. And so this section, I want to talk about uh, herbs, plant medicine, botanical medicine, whatever you want to call it. And there are literally thousands of plant medicines, and there are as uh, more ways to combine them in different uh, traditional medical systems. So there is a Western herbal tradition, there's Chinese medical herbal tradition. Uh, there, is, uh, there are different Native American uh, herbal traditions. There are South American, there's Ayurveda. Uh, there are specific ones in the uh, Soviet Union, et cetera, former Russian states. Uh, so we're not gonna get into all that. I'm just gonna talk about some of the ones we commonly hear about and how, uh, they likely work in this setting. Now, a lot of people will say, well, if we're looking for prevention and getting ready for cold and flu season, wouldn't herbs be more uh, of an interventional thing instead of a preventive thing? And that's a good question. So the idea with uh, an, an herbal product or the difference between prevention versus an intervention is if I'm taking something like the nutrients we talked about or the lifestyle adjustments we talked about, those are truly preventive. They're trying to keep your body active, your immune system active, trying to keep you as the, um, the best immune version of yourself, trying to make you a, a small target for viruses, bacteria, et cetera. Now, as I always say, does doing any of these things guarantee you're not going to get a cold or the flu or COVID or some other new thing that comes along? No, of course not. That'd be stupid. There's nothing that can guarantee you that even sitting alone in a room won't guarantee that for you. But it does make you less likely or less of an opportune target for these infectious things. The other thing is, like we've seen a lot with COVID, certainly not with everybody, but like we see a lot with COVID or colds and flus, if your body is prepared and it's really in good shape, when you go into it, you have a better chance of not only having maybe a shorter experience with it, but also coming out the other side with less long lasting after effects. Now, do we see people sometimes who did everything they could and they still have like long COVID or post-viral syndrome from some other thing? Sure, that can happen. Uh, but again, why not do all that you can uh, to make yourself as resilient as possible? So yes, most of what we're gonna talk about are gonna be more on the intervention or maybe I'm uh, maybe preventive in the setting. I'm going to a lot of uh, holiday parties and I just wanna have my immune system up. So definitely all those nutritional things we talked about in the other section, all of those lifestyle things we talked about. And then you hear a lot about uh, things in uh, the family, like the berberine, berberis family. Uh, so you, this would come from things like Oregon grape, et cetera. And uh, they have sort of a shirt tail relative called hydrastis, also known as golden seal. And usually in, the, in, in that end of the spectrum for plants, we prefer things like, you know, Oregon grape, uh, berberis, uh, because it's a little easier to come by, it's a little less endangered, et cetera. But if you've heard of golden seal or hydrastis, it's kind of the same idea. Now, the first thing to keep in mind is we think of uh, this uh, kind of uh, family of these sort of dark, meaty herbs like, like berberis, maybe as antibacterial, but in reality, they're very broad spectrum. They have antibacterial, antiviral, some antifungal anti effect. Also in the case of berberis, uh, it helps with the uh, ma maintenance of the GI tracts flora. There's some newer research out about how it shifts the flora in a direction where some of the things that we eat that might be turned into toxic material actually are not turned into toxic material. So that's kind of cool. So you often see uh, this in some sort of a mixture. Now, a real popular mixture, it, it goes by EHB, um, and uh, that is Echinacea, Hydrastis, and Berberine. And so that would be Berberine, Golden Seal, and then Echinacea, and we'll talk about Echinacea separately. So anyway, it's the kind of thing where um, you might be put on it chronically for other things like blood sugar or gut function or some other thing that's, that's different, but it'd be beneficial. 
but we use it a lot acutely with people who are either they know they're exposed, they're going to be flying on an airplane, they're going to parties, whatever, or uh, people who are starting to feel like they might be getting sick. So again, that's there. Now remember, with all these things we talk about, this is information for you. This is not medical advice. Please work with somebody who knows about herbal or botanical medicine if you're going to start taking a bunch of stuff, especially if you're on other medications or you've got other you know, underlying illness. It's really good to get some uh, ideas. This, this is just uh, non-medical advice information I'm giving you. Um, echinacea I mentioned. So echinacea is kind of really popular for... Um, viral illnesses, uh, flus and colds and stuff. The earlier you take it when you're sick, the better usually. And there was some interesting, um, I guess, publication uh, uh, publications that came out a number of years, probably 20 years ago. And um, some of them were like, well, echinacea doesn't prevent this or that, or it doesn't help with colds, et cetera. And uh, I was on a review team that reviewed one of the more famous ones of these papers. And basically what, what they did, which you have to be careful of with some of the negative data that comes out about anything, but especially herbal medicine, uh, is they used basically the wrong kind and they didn't use enough of a dose to do anything. And so if that's the case, it would be like me saying, well, penicillin doesn't work for certain bacterial infections, but I set up a trial where I gave, you know, one-tenth the normal dose of penicillin and said, oh, look, this penicillin stuff doesn't work. Well, no, it's a, I gave the wrong dose. And all, all I prove with that is that that dose is inappropriate. Um, so echinacea can be helpful. Now, there's a lot of concern uh, uh, in certain people during COVID. And they're like, oh my God, don't do echinacea because it stimulates cytokines and go in a cytokine storm and you'll die. And well, that's not true. Um, echinacea does stimulate cytokines. So on the front end of an illness, it's not bad to have it in there. Is it going to be strong enough to perpetuate a cytokine storm? Or No, it's not going to do that. Uh, so if you are using echinacea, there are some people that react to it. There's some people that have sort of an autoimmune type reaction etc., which again is why you should work with somebody who's trained in botanical therapies. And sometimes that might not be your primary care provider unless they've done extra training in that. Uh, but all um, in North America, anyway, I'm speaking from North America, so I'll speak to our, our system here. All Chinese medicine providers, traditional Chinese medicine providers are trained in traditional Chinese herbal medicine. Now they might use different things I'm talking about, but they would be a good source. Uh, registered or certified uh, botanical medicine providers or herbalists are there. Uh, all uh, naturopathic physicians who are licensed in uh, and, and uh, have passed their boards, uh, they're all trained to do this sort of thing and many other uh, categories as well. Another one, uh, since we talked about echinacea creating uh, some problems uh, in people worrying about cytokine storms, et cetera, um, Another one is uh, elder, black elder, Sambucus. And there's a, a, a medicine, patent medicine called Sambucol that we give the kids a lot. And it's got some Sambucus and it tastes good. So they'll, they'll usually drink it. Um, so elder or Sambucus was also said, oh my God, don't, don't use that. You know, it's used, it's used during colds and flu. Don't use it with COVID because you'll have cytokine. It, it gets the same story as echinacea. It's not going to be strong enough really to do that. Uh, next one is wormwood or the Artemisia family. Now Artemisia family comes from the wormwood plant and uh, the wormwood plant gives us a lot of different subconstituents. So there's like artemisinin as a common oral version, whole plant wormwoods, another oral version, artesanate, and then there's a whole bunch of other ones that are used as drugs. Um, these are known to be very uh, antiviral, antiparasitic. They're used, their constituents are used in malaria, all sorts of stuff. And now there's publications and some uh, case reports of people using uh, artemisinin or wormwood extracts in uh, COVID and treating COVID, et cetera. And so that's another one. Now, it can have some side effects that you want to just sort of watch for if you're taking like a wormwood compound for a long time. 
it can decrease your iron levels. And, you know, initially, if you have too much iron, that may not be a bad thing. And we use that to our advantage when we use artemisinin and artesanate, those sort of things, medically speaking. But long-term use really should be monitored. Your blood count should be monitored, et cetera. Short-term, as I say, in these case studies uh, with COVID, et cetera, um, it, it's shown to be quite useful. We also, long before COVID, uh, we were using it in cancer research. It's, it's now being uh, developed beyond its malaria drug status into cancer drugs. Um, and uh, it, it works quite well in the cancer setting. But what we noticed incidentally was in the, in the clinic we're doing the research for the cancer patients, we had um, a lot of people with chronic infections who didn't have cancer. And so we started to use the artesanate, the intravenous version of this, so it's a little packed a little more punch with those folks with some viral infections and we get very uh, unique, but uh, very uh, helpful responses to the viral infections with that family. Another one you hear a lot about uh, known as Logusticum or OSHA. Uh, and OSHA can be spelled a couple of different ways. There's a lot of uh, uh, species uh, in the genus, but OSHA or Logusticum is used a lot in many traditional medicine uh, types of formulas and we use a lot for an antiviral. It's, it's primarily antiviral, it does some other good things, but that's another one that you'll see. Then uh, one of my favorites, because it, it kind of covers most infectious agents is oregano. And you think, I mean like oregano, I'd put on you know my Italian food or something like that, yeah, it's in that family. A lot of the supplements are made with a stronger version. It's usually Mexican oregano or an extract thereof. And we use that. It's got good antifungal coverage. It can be antibacterial, antiparasitic, and antiviral. So oregano can be very useful as a supplement. Um, and then uh, the last big area I want to talk about because it's so popular and so useful is uh, our medicinal types of mushrooms. And so here I'm not looking so much at the uh, psychedelic versions of medicinal mushrooms, although we could do a show all about them, look at more the immune immunologic mushrooms. So you think about uh, things like mitake and uh, shiitake, uh, also astragalus, uh, cremini mushrooms. And then, you know, people always gave uh, white button mushrooms kind of a hard time in the, in the medical industry until all of a sudden someone published it uh, simply by eating a certain amount of white button mushrooms every day, people's immune functions would shift. And so now some of the supplemental uh, companies actually have white button mushroom, you know, extracts, et cetera. So all mushrooms have these properties. Now, most of them are immunomodulatory, so they're there to help regulate. Sometimes they're a type of thing that you might take preventively just to kind of keep your immune system, you could say spunky and uh, online throughout the cold and flu season. There are some mixtures of immune mushrooms. Some people will do that and they'll rotate different mixtures every month. And then sometimes, it, you know, if you're sick, uh, your practitioner might uh, give you a lot of one kind or one family or something of that nature. So mushrooms can be very useful. Now, Anything you can eat is also a benefit. So if you can incorporate eating mushrooms into your regular dietary plan, you will get some of the immune benefit from that as well. You're just going to get more concentrated version from uh, the, you know, the, the supplement that you might get, or maybe a concentrate that you make into a tea or some other thing that your practitioner might give you. But the way to think about mushrooms is most of them really are immunoregulatory. Uh, but that's not a bad thing on the preventive side of the scale because they can help the immune system kind of stay uh, level and steady and uh, work at its best. And like I say, if you're getting exposed or, uh, you know, or you know you've gotten exposed, you might be, you know, feeling a little rough. Taking these uh, things early and uh, along the way is much better than waiting you know, it's sort of like a lot of things. We see this a lot with antiviral drugs. Like if you wait to take them till you've been sick for a while, the drugs don't do a whole lot for most people. So earlier is better. Well, it's kind of the same with supplements. Yes, you can, you know, kind of reel it back in after a while, but um, you just want to keep in mind that, you know, the supplements, a lot of these herbs that we talked about, you know, you might want to keep a little bit on hand and then, uh, you know, take them as soon as you start feeling like you caught something or you were exposed to something. Um, and again, you know, 
this is just information, you, not medical advice. You need to check this out with whoever your healthcare providers. But when it comes to herbs, you may need to find a healthcare provider who is trained in the use of herbal medicines to really get uh, good, solid information. All right, this is Dr. Anderson. We're about done with this section. Uh, please remember to like, share, subscribe, whether that's on the YouTube uh, channel. We're getting new uh, subscribers there. Thank you very much. Also, do the notifications because sometimes on YouTube we get shoved over in the algorithm and nobody sees what we're doing. Uh, and also, if you're on one of the mini pod burners, we're on all of the main pod burners, Medicine and Health with Dr. Paul Anderson. Make sure you like that and uh, check out the notifications there. All right, I will see you all in the next session. You've listened to the shows on CTR, and perhaps you've found yourself thinking, maybe I should host my own show, but I don't know how. It's easier than you think. From the beginning with private coaching sessions to your own live broadcasts, CTR Network will prepare you on every level to share your knowledge, expand your brand, and take your business to the next level. At CTR, we nurture your vision and make it a radio reality. Contact Cameron Steele at 425-221-3646 or Cameron at CTRnetwork.com and put your dream into motion today.